No one is hiring junior developers anymore, neither startups nor large companies. At least that's what it feels like from the overall sentiment to me. People around me that I personally know that have either completed coding boot camps or gotten their bachelor's degree or are still studying are actually having difficult times to find junior developer position. Just giving a quick look at LinkedIn or other hiring websites, you can also see a very reduced number of junior developer positions posted every day. I literally tried searching for software engineer positions in Germany, and I also did the same for the US, and I didn't see a single junior developer position on the very first page or on the first page of the search. But before we jump into the solutions that from my perspective could potentially help junior developers to actually land their job, let's understand the reason why this is happening. Well, first and foremost, the economy. Most of the countries are struggling with their economies at the moment. The inflation rates are high, the salaries of people having caught up, meaning they can't afford the same lifestyle that they had before. What this means for the companies is that they're obviously trying to cut down on their spendings, meaning hire less people or even set a hiring freeze, meaning not hire anyone, or actually lay people off. And by that, meaning not hiring junior developers anymore. And this is the question we need to dig deeper into. What's up with the junior developers? Why are companies still hiring senior developers, as we saw on the search page, but not junior developers anymore? You see, the supply and demand ratio has also shifted dramatically in the recent years. 10 years ago, or even 8 years ago, the supply and demand ratio was completely different. There were a lot of companies hiring developers, but there weren't enough developers to be hired. Meaning, developers were getting paid higher for the same job, because the companies are st simply struggling to find developers. In this case, we see that the developer has the leverage to first of all decide which company they want to work for and of course the salary. Now with all this given, companies are realizing that by hiring a senior developer, they can achieve more than by hiring a junior developer, obviously. But instead of hiring three junior developers, they can simply hire one senior developer and of course drive the salaries a bit lower because yeah, that's the economy at the moment. The senior developer can be onboarded into the team much faster than a junior developer. They already know what's going on. They've already seen these errors that a junior developer is still yet to understand and analyze, meaning the release cycle of the app that the company is producing is going to be much faster. And the companies can simply give senior developers the AI tools that are becoming more and more popular at the moment, like GitHub Copilot, and automate a bunch of stuff that they would otherwise need junior developers for. Now, the most important part of the video for you probably, how to take advantage of all of that and eventually how to succeed. Well, maybe after watching this far, your first thought would be, damn, I need to become a senior developer. And you know what? You're not completely wrong. But becoming a senior developer is all about the experience. It's not about how many YouTube tutorials you watched, how many courses you've taken, because the theory that you see in videos is completely different from the practical part that you can experience by working inside the team. But the good news is that you can actually speed up this process of gaining experience. How? Well, for that, I compiled a really small list of three things. First of all, try to aim become a, an end-to-end -end developer. Let's say you've been hired to, at a company and you, have, you are your own team, you're literally one person in a team, and you've been asked to build an app in your local host and then bring it to the cloud. And if you need three or six people to do that, then you're not an end-to-end -end developer. In other words, end-to-end -end developer is a full-stack developer who is actually very well-rounded and can understand many different topics. For example, someone who can build front-end applications as well as build server applications or an API for this client and then actually deploy it on the cloud. Or another example, a machine learning engineer who can train models and then a software engineer who can actually deploy it into the cloud. If you can do both of these tasks at the same time, then you're an end-to-end -end engineer and your demand in the market is very, very high. So even if you don't have that many years of experience, if you can do that, if you're able to do all of that, then you're automatically more hireable. Second point, by giving up your social life, having no friends and simply committing to studying. Okay, that's actually a joke, but maybe not completely. What I want to say is that you will have to sacrifice 
time in order to get better. What I mean is look at the senior developers around you, maybe your friends or already your colleagues and see what they can do that you cannot. Ask for their favorite books, ask for their favorite blog. Build side projects on your own. Maybe this will give you problems to solve that you've never encountered before. Or simply go to go solving lead code problems. Just pick the most difficult one. Or use platforms like Code Crafters to build the actual implementations of these very popular technologies such as Docker or Redis to understand what's going on under the hood. I think it would be a very big plus if you mention it to someone on their interview that you've built Redis in your free time. I'm of course affiliated by Code Crafters, but it simply doesn't change the fact that it's a very fun platform and it's simply irreplaceable for what it's doing and for what you can learn there. And the last point is, is simply try to learn how to sell yourself. The problem is there are many smart people among us, but they are not able to sell their skills. You literally have to be able to sell your skills and knowledge just the way Jordan Belfort or Leonardo DiCaprio, who's playing him, in the movie of The Wolf of Wall Street, sells the stocks. At the end of the day, you are the product and the company is trying to buy this product, meaning buy you. So you might as well simply set yourself in a showroom. One of the suggestions from my side would actually be to prepare well for the interviews and especially for the questions such as what was your biggest challenge or what was your biggest achievement. Just look at look look in your look back into your history, pick one or two things that you can elaborate on and simply use them for every interview. And also use this very effective XYZ pattern in your resume so that you can outline your achievements better. I will link all of that in the description so that you can check it out. It will be a big help, I promise. Well, maybe the fourth point that I also didn't put, maybe you should subscribe to the channel in order to improve your knowledge or rather constantly improve your knowledge. And of course, don't forget to hit the like button. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.